In our rush to do everything faster, we end up doing everything worse. Carl Honore. In a world that moves at breakneck speed, where the tick of the clock dictates our lives and the buzz of technology constantly interrupts our thoughts, it's easy to lose sight of the art of living itself. This is where the philosophy of slow living steps in, a gentle yet powerful reminder that there is more to life than just racing to the finish line. As Carl Honoré, a vocal advocate of the slow movement, eloquently put it, in our rush to do everything faster, we end up doing everything worse. This simple statement encapsulates the essence of slow living, a philosophy that encourages us to break free from the shackles of haste and urgency and embrace a life lived with intention, mindfulness, and a deep appreciation for the present moment. At its core, slow living is not about doing everything at a snail's pace. Rather, it's about finding the right speed to do things with purpose, quality, and a deeper sense of satisfaction. It's a philosophy that challenges the modern narrative of more is better, urging us to step back and question our relentless pursuit of efficiency and speed. This lifestyle choice is a conscious effort to decelerate the pace of our lives, allowing us to breathe, reflect, and engage more fully with our surroundings and our inner selves. The idea of slow living stems from the slow food movement, which began in Italy in the 1980s as a protest against the opening of a fast food restaurant in Rome. This movement, which prioritized local food traditions and sustainable agriculture, soon blossomed into a global crusade against the homogenization of culture and the relentless pace of modern life. Today, the concept of slow living has seeped into various aspects of our lives, from slow travel and slow fashion to slow parenting and slow education, each advocating for a more measured, mindful and sustainable approach to these areas. Slow living is, in many ways, a personal journey, a path that leads to greater self-awareness and a more harmonious relationship with time. It encourages us to pause and savor life's simple pleasures, to engage in activities that bring joy and fulfillment, and to cultivate relationships that are meaningful and enduring. It's about making a conscious choice to prioritize quality over quantity, to value experiences over possessions, and to find beauty in the ordinary and the everyday. Embracing slow living doesn't mean rejecting technology or modern conveniences. Rather, it's about using them in a way that enhances our lives without dominating them. It's about finding balance in a world that often seems unbalanced, about rediscovering the rhythm that resonates with our individual spirit and aligns with our personal values and aspirations. In this context, slow living becomes an act of rebellion, a way to reclaim control over our time and our lives. It's a statement against the culture of instant gratification and perpetual busyness that defines much of our modern existence. By choosing to live slowly, we are choosing to live deliberately, to make room for growth, creativity, and a deeper connection with the world around us. As we delve into the various facets of slow living, we will explore how this philosophy can be applied to different areas of our lives. From the way we eat, and the way we work, to the way we play, and the way we rest. Slow living offers a blueprint for a life that is richer, more meaningful, and more in tune with the natural rhythms of the world. Let's embark on this journey together, a journey towards a life that is not measured by the number of breaths we take, but by the moments that take our breath away. Let's discover the art of slow living, one mindful step at a time. Lesson 1. Embracing Daily Rituals Do not dwell in the past. Do not dream of the future. Concentrate the mind on the present moment. Buddha
This timeless wisdom echoes profoundly in the context of our first exploration in the journey of slow living, embracing daily rituals. Rituals, often perceived as mundane or routine, are in fact powerful tools that can anchor us in the present, providing structure, comfort, and a sense of grounding in our fast-paced lives. In a world where constant change and uncertainty seem to be the only constants, establishing daily rituals becomes an act of self-care and mindfulness. These rituals need not be elaborate. They can be as simple as a morning cup of coffee savored in silence, a short walk in the park, or the nightly routine of reading before bed. The key lies in their regularity and the intention behind them. When we engage in these rituals, we are not just performing tasks, we are consciously creating moments in our day that are ours alone untouched by the external demands of the world. These rituals serve as anchors, holding us steady in the swirling currents of our busy lives. They give us something to look forward to, a moment of calm in the storm. When we start our day with a ritual, we set the tone for the hours that follow. Similarly, ending our day with a ritual helps us unwind and prepare for restful sleep. In these moments, we find a rare opportunity to pause, reflect, and connect with ourselves. This connection is vital for our mental and emotional well-being, offering a chance to check in with our inner selves, to align our actions with our values, and to find joy in the simplicity of the moment. These daily rituals are not just about self-reflection. They also have the power to transform our perception of time. In a society that values productivity above all else, where every minute is expected to be filled with purpose and achievement, rituals allow us to reclaim time for ourselves. They teach us that not every moment needs to be productive in the conventional sense. Some moments can simply be about being, experiencing the world around us, savoring the sensations of the present and acknowledging our existence in its fullest form. Creating meaningful routines in our daily life also helps us cultivate a sense of stability and normalcy, especially in times of stress or upheaval. When the world around us feels chaotic and unpredictable, our rituals can be a source of comfort and reliability. They remind us that, despite the ever-changing nature of life, there are still aspects that are within our control, our actions, our thoughts, and how we choose to spend our time. As we integrate these rituals into our lives, we may find that they evolve and change, just as we do. What once brought us peace and joy may no longer resonate in the same way, and that's okay. The beauty of rituals lies in their fluidity. They can be adapted, modified, and reinvented to suit our current needs and circumstances. The important thing is to remain mindful and intentional about them, to recognize their value in our journey towards slow living. Embracing daily rituals is about more than just creating routines. It's about crafting a life that is intentional, mindful, and deeply connected to the present. It's about recognizing that in the ordinary, we can find the extraordinary, and in the mundane, the magical. Lesson 2. The Beauty of Simplicity Life is really simple, but we insist on making it complicated. Confucius In this age of consumerism and information overload, where abundance and complexity are often mistaken for success and happiness, the call for simplicity becomes not just a whisper but a resonating demand for a return to the basics. Simplifying life to focus on what truly matters is an art in itself, a conscious stripping away of the non-essential to make space for the essential. At the heart of simplicity lies the concept of minimalism, not just as an aesthetic choice, but as a mindset and a way of life. It's about reducing the clutter, both physical and mental, that crowds our lives and clouds our judgment. This clutter isn't just the tangible mess in our homes and workspaces, it's also the intangible mess in our minds, the excess of thoughts, 
worries, and distractions that keep us from experiencing the present fully. Embracing minimalism in possessions and thoughts is akin to setting oneself free from the chains of excess. Minimalism isn't about deprivation. Rather, it's about finding abundance in less. It's about recognizing that having fewer possessions can lead to more freedom, more energy, and more focus. When we declutter our spaces, we declutter our minds. We remove the things that distract us, that drain our energy, that keep us mired in a perpetual state of wanting more. This creates room for us to breathe, to think, to create, and to enjoy the things that truly matter, our relationships, our passions, our peace of mind. In simplifying our lives, we also simplify our thoughts. We learn to distinguish between what deserves our attention and what does not. We begin to value quality over quantity, substance over superficiality. This mental decluttering is essential in an era where we are bombarded with information, where our attention is constantly pulled in a thousand different directions. By simplifying our thoughts, we regain control over our focus, our energy, and ultimately, our time. The journey towards simplicity also involves a shift in perspective. It requires us to reevaluate our definitions of success, happiness, and fulfillment. We are often led to believe that more is better, more money, more possessions, more experiences. But simplicity teaches us that true satisfaction doesn't come from having more. It comes from being more, more present, more aware, more aligned with our values. It teaches us to find joy and contentment in the small things, the quiet moments, the simple pleasures that life has to offer. The beauty of simplicity is multifaceted. It's a beauty that lies in the clarity of a decluttered space, in the tranquility of a quiet mind, in the joy of small pleasures, and in the satisfaction of living a life aligned with one's values. As we embrace simplicity, we find that our lives become richer, not in material terms, but in terms of quality, meaning, and purpose. Simplicity, therefore, is not just a pathway to slow living, it is the very essence of it. Lesson 3. Embracing and enjoying your fate. I want to learn more and more to see as beautiful what is necessary in things. Then I shall be one of those who makes things beautiful. Amor Fati, let that be my love henceforth. I do not want to wage war against what is ugly. I do not want to accuse. I do not even want to accuse those who accuse. Looking away shall be my only negation. And all in all and on the whole, someday I wish to be only a yes-sayer. Friedrich Nietzsche. These profound words introduce us to a deeply philosophical yet immensely practical aspect of slow living. Embracing and enjoying your fate. An idea encapsulated in the powerful concept of Amor Fati, the love of one's fate. Amor Fati is not just a philosophical concept, it's a way of living. It's about accepting and even embracing everything that life brings your way, the good and the bad, the joyous and the painful. This acceptance does not imply passive resignation. Rather, it's an active embrace of life in all its fullness, a willingness to see every experience as an integral part of your journey. It's a recognition that every twist and turn, every obstacle and opportunity is a part of the unique tapestry of your life. Understanding and practicing Amor Fati means shifting our perspective on the events that shape our lives. It involves a radical acceptance of the present, regardless of whether it aligns with our wishes or desires. This acceptance is empowering. It frees us from the endless cycle of desire and disappointment, of constantly striving for something different, something more, something else. It allows us to find peace and joy in the way things are, 
rather than constantly seeking happiness in the way we think things should be. Embracing your circumstances, whatever they may be, is not about giving up on change or improvement. On the contrary, it's about recognizing that the only real change we can affect is within ourselves. In our attitudes, our perceptions, and our reactions. When we embrace our fate, we empower ourselves to respond to life's challenges with strength, grace, and wisdom. We learn to see every situation as an opportunity for growth and transformation. Amor Fati teaches us the value of gratitude. In embracing our fate, we learn to be grateful for the experiences that shape us, even the painful ones. We realize that our struggles are often our greatest teachers, that our hardships can be the catalyst for profound personal development. This gratitude is not superficial. It's a deep abiding appreciation for the richness and complexity of life. Living with Amor Fati also means embracing the impermanence of life. It reminds us that everything is transient, our joys, our sorrows, our successes and our failures. This awareness brings a sense of humility and perspective, a recognition that we are but small players in the grand drama of the universe. It teaches us to hold on to things lightly, to enjoy the present moment without clinging to it, to let go gracefully when the time comes. But perhaps the most beautiful aspect of Amor Fati is the way it transforms our relationship with ourselves and the world around us. When we embrace our fate, we learn to be kinder to ourselves, to forgive ourselves for our flaws and failures. We learn to extend this kindness and compassion to others, recognizing that like us, they too are navigating the complexities of fate. We develop a sense of connectedness a realization that we are all part of the same intricate web of existence. Embracing and enjoying your fate is about finding beauty and meaning in the life you have been given. It's about saying yes to life in all its forms, about making peace with the past, engaging fully with the present and facing the future with courage and optimism. It's a crucial step in the journey towards slow living a journey that encourages us to live deeply, thoughtfully, and authentically. Lesson 4. The Value of Leisure Rest is not idleness, and to lie sometimes on the grass under trees on a summer's day Listening to the murmur of the water or watching the clouds float across the sky is by no means a waste of time. John Lubbock In a culture that often equates busyness with importance and productivity with worth, it's crucial to revisit and understand the true role of leisure in our lives. Leisure in its purest form is an essential aspect of human existence a vital counterbalance to the demands of work and the stresses of daily life. Leisure is often misunderstood and unfortunately, frequently conflated with laziness. This misconception stems from a societal narrative that glorifies constant activity and productivity at the expense of rest and relaxation. However, leisure and laziness are fundamentally different. Laziness is characterized by an unwillingness to act or use energy, often leading to stagnation and a sense of dissatisfaction. Leisure, on the other hand, is a conscious choice to engage in restful activities that rejuvenate and enrich our minds and bodies. It is an active pursuit, a deliberate decision to allocate time for activities that bring joy, relaxation, and a break from the routine demands of life. The significance of leisure lies in its capacity to restore us. It provides a space for mental and physical recovery, allowing us to recharge and return to our work with renewed energy and perspective. This restorative process is not just a matter of physical rest, but also of mental relaxation. Leisure time gives us the opportunity to step away from our daily tasks and concerns, to engage in activities that we enjoy for their own sake, this could mean delving into a hobby, spending time in nature, reading a book, 
or simply doing nothing at all. The key is that these activities should be engaged in freely and should bring a sense of joy and relaxation. Moreover, leisure plays a crucial role in fostering creativity and productivity. Contrary to the belief that constant work yields more results, research shows that taking regular breaks and engaging in leisure activities can significantly boost creativity and productivity. Leisure provides the mental space necessary for new ideas and perspectives to emerge. It allows the subconscious mind to process and synthesize information, leading to creative insights that often elude us in the midst of focused work. In addition, it contributes to our overall well-being and happiness. Engaging in these activities can lead to a reduction in stress, an improvement in mood, and an increase in overall life satisfaction. It provides an outlet for expressing ourselves, exploring our interests, and connecting with others. It fosters a sense of accomplishment and fulfillment that is different from, yet just as important as, the fulfillment we derive from our work. It's also essential for personal development and growth. It allows us to explore new interests, develop new skills and broaden our horizons. These activities can challenge us in different ways than our work does, helping us to grow and evolve as individuals. They provide an opportunity for self-discovery and self-expression, allowing us to explore aspects of our identity that might remain dormant in the hustle of daily life. However, embracing leisure requires a shift in mindset. It requires us to let go of the guilt often associated with not being productive and to recognize the value of rest and relaxation. It requires us to prioritize our well-being and to recognize that taking time for leisure is not a luxury, but a necessity. It is a reminder that life is not just about doing, but also about being, not just about productivity, but also about presence. As we continue to explore the tenets of slow living, let us embrace the value of this lesson with open arms. Let us remember that taking time to rest and engage in activities we enjoy is not a deviation from productivity, but a path to a more balanced, creative and fulfilling life. Lesson 5. Embracing Patience Adopt the pace of nature, her secret is patience. Ralph Waldo Emerson In a world increasingly driven by the desire for instant results and immediate gratification, the virtue of patience seems to be waning. The rapid advancements in technology, the pace of modern life, and the cultural shifts in how we communicate and consume have collectively fostered an expectation of quick, if not instantaneous, responses to our needs and desires. This relentless pursuit for the immediate can often leave us feeling rushed, stressed, and perpetually unsatisfied. In contrast, cultivating patience opens a pathway to a more thoughtful, peaceful, and fulfilling way of life. The cultural shift towards instant gratification is evident in various aspects of modern life. From fast food to fast fashion, from binge watching to instant messaging, the emphasis is on speed and efficiency. The ability to have our desires met almost as soon as they arise has created an underlying impatience in our approach to life. This impatience is not just external, it seeps into our internal landscape affecting how we perceive time, how we manage our expectations, and how we deal with the inevitable delays and obstacles that life presents. The result is a collective restlessness, a sense of dissatisfaction that lingers even when our immediate needs are met. Cultivating patience, therefore, becomes a crucial counterbalance to this trend. It involves developing the ability to wait to endure delay or hardship without becoming annoyed or anxious. Patience is not a passive resignation to circumstances, but an active engagement with the process of life. 
It's about finding contentment and peace in the journey, not just the destination. It's about understanding that some things simply cannot be rushed and that the best experiences often come from a willingness to wait. Developing patience requires both awareness and practice. It starts with recognizing the moments when impatience arises and understanding the triggers that set it off. This awareness can come from mindfulness practices such as meditation, which help us cultivate a sense of calm and presence in the moment. Mindfulness teaches us to observe our thoughts and feelings without judgment, allowing us to see the impatience without getting caught up in it. Another effective technique for cultivating patience is to deliberately put ourselves in situations where we have to wait. This could be as simple as standing in the longer line at the grocery store, taking the slower route to work, or refraining from using technology shortcuts. These small acts of patience can strengthen our ability to handle bigger moments of delay and frustration. They teach us to find comfort and peace in the waiting to use the time for reflection, or simply to be present in the moment. Practicing gratitude is another powerful tool in developing patience. When we focus on the things we are grateful for, we shift our perspective from what we lack to what we have. This shift can alleviate the sense of urgency that often accompanies impatience. Gratitude helps us appreciate the present moment with all its imperfections and delays, reminding us that there is value and beauty to be found in the here and now. Additionally, setting realistic expectations is key to cultivating patience. Often, our impatience stems from expectations that are out of sync with reality. By setting more realistic goals and timelines, we can reduce the frustration and disappointment that come from unmet expectations. This doesn't mean lowering our standards or giving up on our ambitions. It simply means acknowledging that some things take time, and that's okay. Cultivating patience also involves a shift in how we view time itself. In our fast-paced world, time is often seen as a commodity, something to be maximized and optimized. Patience invites us to see time differently, not as something to be filled or managed, but as something to be experienced and savored. It teaches us to value the quality of our time, not just the quantity. Cultivating patience is about embracing a slower, more deliberate approach to life. It's about learning to wait with grace and dignity, to find joy and meaning in the process, and to trust in the natural unfolding of life. As we continue our journey through the principles of slow living, let us carry with us the wisdom of patience, the understanding that good things often take time and that there is much to be learned and appreciated in the waiting. Patience, after all, is not just a virtue. It's a pathway to a deeper, more connected and more fulfilling life. Lesson 6. Living in the Present Moment Realize deeply that the present moment is all you ever have. Make the now the primary focus of your life. Eckhart Tolle This lesson, crucial in the philosophy of slow living, invites us to explore the art of focusing on and truly enjoying the now. In our fast-paced, forward-looking society, where future plans and past memories often overshadow our current experiences, learning to live in the present moment is both a challenge and a profound opportunity for enrichment and growth. Understanding the concept of living in the now is fundamental to embracing this art. Living in the present moment means fully engaging with our experiences as they unfold without the filters of bias, judgment, or preoccupation with past and future events. It's about acknowledging and appreciating life as it happens, recognizing that each moment, no matter how mundane, holds its own value and beauty. The present moment is where life occurs, 
It's where we make decisions, feel emotions, and experience the world around us. When we are fully present, we are actively participating in our lives, rather than just letting them pass us by. However, staying present and mindful in our daily lives is often easier said than done. Our minds are naturally inclined to wander, to ruminate on past events, and to worry about future possibilities. To counteract this, one practical tip is to engage in regular mindfulness or meditation practices. These practices train the mind to focus on the present and help develop the ability to return to the now when we find ourselves getting lost in thoughts of the past or future. Techniques like focusing on the breath, engaging in a body scan, or simply observing our current thoughts and feelings without judgment can ground us in the present moment. Another key strategy for living in the present is to cultivate an attitude of gratitude. By regularly acknowledging and appreciating what we have right here and now, we can shift our focus away from what we lack or what we desire in the future. Keeping a gratitude journal, or simply taking a few moments each day to mentally list things we are thankful for, can significantly enhance our awareness and appreciation of the present. In addition, reducing distractions is crucial in our attempt to live in the present. In a world where our attention is constantly pulled in multiple directions by technology and the demands of daily life, creating spaces free from distractions can help us engage more deeply with the present moment. This might involve setting aside specific times during the day when we unplug from our devices or creating a quiet, peaceful space in our homes where we can sit and be present without interruptions. Engaging fully in our current activities is another practical way to stay present. Often, we find ourselves performing tasks while our minds are elsewhere. By consciously focusing on the task at hand, whether it's eating a meal, having a conversation or going for a walk, we can enhance our experience of the present. This means actively listening when someone is speaking, savoring each bite of our food, or noticing the sights and sounds around us as we walk. Furthermore, practicing mindfulness in everyday activities can transform mundane tasks into opportunities for presence. Simple activities like washing dishes, taking a shower or driving can become exercises in mindfulness if we focus on the sensations and experiences associated with these activities. For instance, feeling the warmth of the water, the texture of the soap, or the movement of our hands as we wash dishes can anchor us in the present moment. Embracing the present moment also involves accepting our current emotions and experiences without judgment. Often we resist unpleasant feelings or situations which only serve to take us out of the present. By acknowledging and accepting our emotions as they arise, we allow ourselves to experience them fully and then let them go. This acceptance doesn't mean resigning ourselves to negative situations, but rather acknowledging them as part of our current reality. Living in the present moment is about embracing life as it unfolds, with all its unpredictability and imperfection. It's about letting go of the need to control or predict the future and releasing the hold that past experiences have on us. It's a journey towards being more attentive, more engaged and more alive in every moment. As we draw this exploration of the art of slow living to a close, let us take a moment to reflect on the key lessons that have illuminated our journey weaving together a tapestry of wisdom that can guide us towards a more mindful, fulfilled, and balanced existence. We began with the power of embracing daily rituals, understanding how small intentional practices can ground us in the present, 
creating a rhythm and a sense of stability amidst the chaos of life. These rituals, whether as simple as a morning cup of tea or a nightly moment of gratitude, serve as anchors reminding us of the joy found in the ordinary and the importance of carving out time for ourselves. Moving forward, we delved into the beauty of simplicity, learning that the minimalist approach to life, both in terms of possessions and mindset, can lead to greater clarity, peace and satisfaction. By stripping away the non-essential, we make room for the truly important, allowing ourselves to breathe, reflect and engage more deeply with our surroundings and ourselves. In discussing embracing and enjoying your fate, we explored the concept of Amor Fati, the love of one's fate. We learned that accepting and even embracing everything life throws our way can empower us, not just to endure but to thrive. This acceptance allows us to find beauty and growth in all experiences, fostering resilience and a deep-seated contentment in the face of life's vicissitudes. The value of leisure taught us that rest is not idleness, but a vital component of a well-rounded, creative and productive life. Leisure, in its truest form, is an act of self-care and rejuvenation, allowing us to return to our daily tasks with renewed energy and perspective, and reminding us that there is more to life than just work and obligations. In cultivating patience, we learn the importance of developing the ability to endure delay or hardship without becoming annoyed or anxious. In a world obsessed with speed and immediate gratification, patience is a quiet yet powerful act of rebellion, a testament to our ability to embrace life's rhythms and find joy in the journey, not just the destination. Finally, living in the present moment brought us to the realization that the here and now is all we truly have. By engaging fully with our current experiences, we open ourselves to the richness and depth of life, finding joy, beauty and wisdom in the fleeting ordinary moments that make up our days. Remember, it's not about doing everything at a snail's pace. It's about living intentionally, mindfully, and with a sense of purpose. It's about choosing quality over quantity, depth over breadth, and living in a way that aligns with your values and brings you genuine happiness. Let this exploration be a starting point, an invitation to slow down, to savor, and to reconnect with the essence of living. As you step back into the rhythm of your life, carry with you the lessons of slow living. Let them guide your choices, your actions, and your mindset. So go forth with the knowledge that in the simplicity, in the rituals, in the leisure, in the patience, and in the present moment, there lies a path to a richer, more fulfilling life. Embrace it, savor it, and let it transform you. The art of slow living is a gift one that is available to all who seek it. May your journey be filled with discovery, joy, and an abundance of moments that take your breath away.